but it was a way for me to kind of gain my independence. <laughs> Now, Maria, yeah, but back then. <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay. Yeah, I did a heartbroken because he told me, "You are not a manager, and you will never be." I want to welcome you as an entrepreneur. Um, your project, Yulia Ivan, is beyond business, and I want you to tell me everything about it. <laughs> And I want you to tell me actually how you reached this moment of your life because I know personally that you come from a totally different environment as a woman, as a female entrepreneur. And this is what's your story. Yeah. So, Elpina, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, it's really, really good to be here and also an honor because I know that your podcast will reach a lot of people. And as you said, I hope through my story, we will manage to inspire people and for them to become a best version of themselves, you know. Um, so my project actually started beyond, uh, beyond the actual business that I have, because the project is also the name of the business. Mm -hmm. But it started with a story from 2016 when I actually started a blog when I spoke a lot of the struggles that I have been through, uh, through my childhood, through my teenage period and then as a young woman and also going through divorce and whatever also happened in my professional life. But then in 2019, Uh, because I also realized being in a management position was not fulfilling enough for me and I wanted to do something different, um, I left the, the position and You focused. literally quit the job? I quit. Okay. I quit the job. So I was actually leading a share service center in a Dutch group of companies back then. Okay. And I just felt like it wasn't enough for me because I also uh, noticed the differences that the way I have been treated as a woman and also the inequality of, of you know, advantages when it comes to my work. So I said I had to change something about I it. I need to, add, first of all, uh, say that you come from Romania. Yeah. Okay. And that you have worked worldwide basically mm -hmm. and I want you to also tell me about this experience you know in the different positions that you actually and the different roles that you mm -hmm. had as a woman worldwide and the way that you know mm -hmm. this reflected upon you and how you came across mm -hmm. so um, actually my first job ever was in uh, first year of college because um, my family was struggling financially and they were not able to support me through faculty. I also have another four brothers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so <laughs> it was family. really a big family and was really challenging. So I kind of have to figure out a way how to continue my studies. Mm -hmm. So my first job, it was actually, you know, the paper flyers that you receive with all the ads for groceries and so on. Yes. And back then, they, you had to put it one by one in the post, right? <laughs> and that was actually my, my, my first job ever. It was so poorly paid. I can barely, uh, I don't know, get some drinks with my friends. And back then I was smoking, so a pack of cigarettes, something like this. But it was a way for me to kind of gain my independence. Yes. And not uh, go back to my mom and ask for money because I knew it was a struggle for her, you know. And it was painful because she wanted to offer me more, but she was not able to. Yes. So... Um, Then I went to a Romanian company mm -hmm. and actually I didn't even take in consideration the, the, the domain that I want, I went through. Uh, I just wanted to make money. That was okay. The, that's like, <laughs> that was I, I think that's like, th that can like relate no. to a lot of people. <laughs> so I was young. I was not thinking uh, any of my career or something. I just wanted to make money. So I went to truck parts. 
to 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 do what <laughs> selling truck parts okay <laughs> so it's a really difficult domain in Romania and especially like uh, 15 years ago when i entered it um i think there were about three four women in the whole industry or something like this there were oh just God. a few women in the whole country you know in this uh but you, at some point i knew it was really difficult for for a woman because i could see like maybe every day but not every mm. day but every week i would send to the kitchen to <laughs> do <coffee>. something that, <laughs> or something like this <laughs> by the man that i was selling truck parts to yeah but um i was so determined to succeed that at some point these were i just transformed this um let's say these experience. words and experiences yeah into fuel for me to just grow as much as I can so I can kind of get out of this environment you know and to also something if I may say actually that you could benefit from mm -hmm. you know it was I you know it's like really difficult for people to relate but you know even from a bad experience you can actually learn a lot mm -hmm. and you know uh take this and just pour it into something mm. entirely different that you mm. may want to create afterwards mm. okay yeah and because i wanted to grow so much um you know i went to my manager to the owner of the company after almost four years while i was growing like really fast and i asked for a management position good job Yeah, <laughs> you cannot imagine the anxiety I felt doing that. I have no idea, no experience how to do that. I was about 23, so it was not much information like nowadays on how to, you know, just Google it and say how to negotiate yes, your salary exactly. or stuff yes, like that. Yes, yes. So it's so, like, it was a lot of pressure. It, it was, was, it and was. Sorry to, just to mention this, but you come across as a very collected person. Mm. So I <laughs> <laughs> now I am, but back then. <laughs> I can only imagine. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, I think a good point for me, it was that I always thrive in stressful situation. It's probably, you know, I continued the toxic environment for my family and the toxic environment professional side. And that kind of fueled uh, my growth in a way. Uh, so I went to, to the owner of the company and said, I, I think I deserve a management position, but at the same time, I would like to grow more. And I was really disappointed and heartbroken because he told me, you are not a manager and you will never be. Yes, <laughs> I was so disappointed because I admired this man. I thought he knew how to do good business, but actually he later on I realized um, when I started to gain more knowledge in business that he was not really that professional. Um, and I, I want to take a note on this because I really want to discuss, because of your skill set, actually, what is a good manager? So in my perception and in my experience, what also I have seen that brought me really performant results with the teams that I led, it is, first of all, to always think on your, on your people. So if you think on your just personal gain, you will lose because nobody will follow a leader that it has only it's his or her interest right yes so i think that the role of a manager is first of all to make sure that he or she knows the vision he has a plan or she has a plan and at the same time knows how to evaluate the skills in the team and the skills in each person and also to see what type of skills are necessary for the result those results that he wants or she wants to happen you know that's really important and at the same time to help people enrich and reach their lives and also empower them i want to make a point out of this story and maybe like now use your skill set um for personal gain okay <laughs> as a manager And I realized that, you know, like leading my company and the people who work in it, I realized that sometimes 
you struggle, for example, with course correction and you don't always know where you're going, but you always have to, I kind of feel like you have to inspire the people that work for you and that surround you, the people who work with you, I would say, um, to move forward. Even if you don't have a very crystal clear vision, obviously long term you do know what you want to, to do, but you don't really have like the steps. And I really want to talk about this with you because I think it like comes up in a lot of women and female entrepreneurs mm. and entrepreneurs in general, actually, who start their own company, mm. who are startups, for example, and they do not have the tool set. They do not have the right, you know, OK, what am I doing right now? But maybe I should implement this. Or maybe I should do this, you know, mm. and I think you are the right person, actually, to talk about these things due, obviously, to your experience and to your skill set. Yeah, well, in my programs, it's not what I do. It is not only management, but it's also self-leadership. And this is where kind of the spark and the final piece of the puzzle comes in. Because if you as a leader find out which is your mission, your vision is just going to pop up. And not only that, but you will attract in your life the people who will tell you which are the next step for your mission to happen. Okay, that's a very good insight and I will use it. But let's go back to the bad manager and mm. continue with, you know, the track of mm. your story, the narrative. Mm. So this manager actually in that moment hurt me. But on the long term, I just realized that if I stayed there, my future would not be where I am right now. Yes. At that moment, I said, okay, then it's not the place for me, you know. And I went to uh, one of their biggest competitors on the market. And in two months, I, they offered me the first branch. And then in six months, I was leading three branches in Romania. And then after two months, I also helped out with a project in Bulgaria. So I realized that, you know, sometimes it may feel like a blockage, like a stumble, but out of that can often become a huge opportunity for yes. growth, Yes, you know. But then in, in this company, in this great competitor, I realized that it was the same thing, the same business that previously, but on a bigger scale. Yeah. And the management was kind of similar because it was also toxic. And, you know, I felt in many places, in many ways, because uh, we were about two or three women in leadership position in this company, very often we were diminished, bullied, uh, shamed publicly in in, session, in uh, meetings. So I said to myself, this is not a place for me because definitely you cannot grow in a company that it's doing things like this because it jeopardizes your self-esteem and your self-confidence. So you cannot grow in this type of environment. How many times have you come across uh, to this behavior? How many times have you experienced actually in the different positions career. that you are? <laughs> <laughs> All my career. It's not something that, I don't think it's something that will disappear overnight. It's something culture. Yes. It's something that I have uh, encountered internationally. As you said, I work in Europe. I also work in the Middle East. Um, I don't think it's going to happen overnight because we are still living in patriarchal society. Most of the societies are patriarchal. And as women, we started to kind of shout out our rights and gain them just in the couple of dozens of years. And we yes. still struggled with that, yes. right? While men had the opportunity for centuries to, to kind of show what type of societies they can create. Totally. And if we look at the societies nowadays, well, most of the societies are not happy, are not fulfilled, are depressed. So that means, from my perspective, if patriarchal societies are created like this, these are the consequences. Maybe it's time for a change, isn't it? It is. Oh, absolutely.